Our next guest on Let's Talk is E911 Director Jeff Presley. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, sir. This is, this is uh, we're in the heart of tornado season, although this, these days it seems like it's always tornado season. Is that the way you guys approach it? That's correct. You know our weather patterns has changed over the past few years. Uh, Craighead County and Jonesboro, you know, in the past has had some serious tornadoes, 1973, 1968. Uh, you know, the, in the last three years, we installed 33 brand new sirens throughout the city. Uh, and we've got them set up where some of them overlap. Uh, they'll rotate, so you'll hear them. When we test them on Thursdays, if, if the weather's permitting, uh, they cover the city pretty well. But, you know, technology's changed since 1973, since the last tornado. Instead of doing a blanket warning, uh, what that means is when the National Weather Service spots any type of rotation on radar, they will issue a warning for your area, including the full county. So what we do is we track the threat. And what that means is we're hooked into the National Weather Service in Little Rock and Memphis during any time of watch or warning or anything that we need to be looking at. If there's a direct threat to the city, that's when the sirens are activated in Jonesboro. So when, when uh, will all of the sirens be uh, turned on at one time? That is correct. We do have the option uh, with the system we have now to set off a section to south, southeast. Uh, but our protocol is if Jonesboro is under a threat and we've got police officers, first responders running around, we want to set that whole siren system off to alert everybody that's in the city. Now you'll get your siren, your, your warnings from the National Weather Service. Is that correct? We're actually hooked into what's called the National Weather Service chat line. So anytime uh, there's a threat, uh, watch warning for our area, we log into that and uh, we stay connected. They will prompt us when Jonesboro is under a direct threat. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll get a warning because there's rotation, uh, let's say, north of Bono or Monette. Uh, so in the matter of safety, we don't want to set those uh, sirens off in the city of Jonesboro for that warning if it's out of our area. Because what you're doing is you're adding a, an element of hazard to that family because a lot of folks have to leave their home and go out in the elements, take their children to a shelter. Uh, so you're actually adding liability to that uh, with uh, thunderstorms, uh, down power lines and flooding, things like that. So that's why we want to be spot on. And if that threat is for Jonesboro, that's when that siren will go off. So what I'm hearing is sometimes we, we might have a local media report that there is a tornado warning in our area, but it's not a specific threat to Jonesboro precisely. And if that's the case, we're not going to set off sirens in Jonesboro. That is correct. And you know, one of the challenges of setting these sirens off and watching this weather is, is nighttime. Anytime you have this tornado warnings in the middle of the night, early mornings, uh, you know, you can't see the wall clouds, you can't see the rotation. We're actually depending on the weather service along with our local media to watch that rotation and to uh, help key us in to what's going on. You know, daytime, uh, we'll get a lot of phone calls from citizens. Uh, that really helps us. So, for instance, a few years back, uh, there was no watches or warnings for our area, but there was a wall cloud coming in, a severe thunderstorm. Uh, and it was coming in from the southwest uh, into Jonesboro. Police officer was watching this wall cloud. Uh, rotation formed out of it. And it started to uh, do damage along a, a path south of Jonesboro. Uh, catching just the very edge east uh, city limits. We went ahead and set those sirens off and uh, there was uh, several million dollars worth of damage from that funnel cloud. Uh, but there again, there was never a warning uh, issued over that. Uh, and it tracked all the way into Lake City into Mississippi County. So we rely a lot on our trained uh, weather spotters, first responders, uh, and then nighttime, of course, that uh, radar system. Very good. So uh, tell me all, uh, what is the latest in uh, technology about tornado warnings? I mean, I know this is a, a progressing science, 
Uh, tell me where we stand. What, what are the, some of the newest things and, and techniques that you guys have learned? Let's go back in history a little bit and start with uh, the warning sirens. Mm -hmm. uh, that is actually an outdoor warning device. Uh, now, we'll get a lot of calls from people that says, hey, I'm in my house watching TV. I can't hear that siren. Uh, now, it's, it's actually an outdoor warning device. Technology today is increased with weather radios. We have a weather station for Jonesboro area. And once this alert is issued or a watch, that radio will notify you. That should be your first alert. And then if you hear the outside warning device, we have immediate threat. So it's time to seek a, a safe spot and get your family safe. All right, and let's go through the safe spots again because we, we, we can't pound this in, enough into people's brains because in the, in the, in the moment of, of stress, you say, oh my goodness, what are the safe spots? Because uh, uh, you know I've heard them all my life, never really paid that close attention until the moment I really needed it. What are the safe spots? First of all, you need to have a family emergency operation plan. Uh, we base our uh, training off of the FEMA format that means every household with children or every household that's uh, going to have to respond to any type of emergency should have a plan. Not only evacuation plans, utility shutoffs, but a safe room for a tornado is going to be an interior room away from the windows and as many walls between you and the outside as you can get. Of course, if you've got a basement, that's a built-in safe room. And now, you know, we've got a lot of the in-garage type safe rooms going in, which is a great thing. And we encourage people in this area to register that shelter or basement or outside storm shelter with 911. And a lot of folks said, well, why should we register that shelter? If we look back at the Joplin, uh, Missouri tornado a few years back, uh, some folks actually lost their lives that went into the shelter but was trapped in there by debris and nobody could find them. Our registry for the Jonesboro and Craig A. County area is based off of GPS coordinates of your safe room. So when you register that safe room, we actually put the coordinates in the database. So if all the landmarks, all the street signs, everything's gone, we still know exactly where your shelter's at. And you can find, but now Jeff, I, I, I'm a, I'm a logical kind of guy. I don't play the lottery because the odds are against it. Uh, the odds are against a, 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 a tornado strike in my, my house. I, sh I should really take this seriously? You should take it serious. Uh, the same thing with uh, if you look at where we live on the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Okay. You know, we're under an earthquake threat every day in this area. You know, you don't think about it. You may not plan for it. But it's, it's a natural disaster. And if you look back at history in 1811, 1812, what happened to the New Madrid Seismic Zone, give you a little uh, detailed information, it will make you prepare. And the same way with tornadoes. If you look back in 1968, where about 35 people lost their life, and 1973, when we lost Jonesboro High School, several businesses, several people lost their life. You know, it kind of brings it into reality. Uh, we should have a plan. We should be ready for this next event because it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's, it's going to happen. Well, now, 46% of Jonesboro uh, rents. And so I would, mean, I would take that to assume a not too much smaller percentage uh, lives in apartments, condos, townhouses, smaller places. Uh, that means there's not likely that you have a, a safe room, uh, necessarily a basement. What, what do you do? You know, we're really fortunate here in Jonesboro to have some of the schools around that has safe rooms. Um, we have school resource officers working at those schools. So even at, at off times in the middle of the night, we've had officers unlock the safe rooms. And, huh. uh, we put that information out on social media, out on our Nixle alerts and things like that to notify people that uh, if you don't have a safe room or a safe spot in your house, there is other options. Well, we've recently had flooding in the area and we do occasionally see flood issues. Tell us what's, uh, what, uh, we, what we need to do in, in regard to flood. You know, if you look 
look at the history of floods in Jonesboro and flash floods, it's a it's an event that we'll have at least every few years, and it happens very quick without a lot of warning. Uh, you know, we try to monitor the weather ahead of time and uh, keep an eye on it, see what's going to happen, and put information out to folks to be prepared. Uh, but sometimes we don't know what part of the city is going to be affected. Uh, so it's really uh, it's one of those things you have to be on top of, have a, uh, a little bit of knowledge of your area. Uh, and if we start putting out those flooding alerts, warnings, and it says evacuate this area, we need you to evacuate. Uh, again, do people do the good job of that? Do, do we find that people are, are in, the, in the areas where they need to evacuate? Do we do a good job of evacuating? We do. Sometimes you have uh, folks that want to wait to the last moment. Uh, and we've had to go in with uh, boats, fire trucks, things like that to get folks out. Uh, we do have some problem areas in the city. Uh, street department, drainage uh, districts are working to clean some of that up. Uh, we have improved, and I think that things are getting better, but we still need that plan in place, especially in your household. If you're in that low-lying area, have a plan to get your family out of there. How many departments do you feel like uh, work as a team to prepare during floods and, and uh, I mean, actually during floods and, and before floods? You know, here in Jonesboro and, and Craighead County, we're fortunate to have some really good proactive street department, uh, public service uh, that can get out there and help folks. We've called out some of our transit buses before to help transport people to shelters and things like that. Uh, we stay in contact with the street department ahead of time before an event uh, and try to get everything cleaned out to make sure we don't have those problems. But during that, uh, event if we have that flooding we have to do evacuations it's a teamwork approach we not only have 911 making mass notifications we got police and fire helping with that response and how many staff members do you have at the e911 center i've got 21 full-time people and at any given time we'll have four radio dispatchers and a call taker um, you know last year uh, we answered uh, 250,000 phone calls in there so if we have one of these storms or major flood events, uh, it's not uncommon for the telephones just to stay busy during that event. Uh, and of course, we have to get information about each one of those calls. That's right. Do you have times when there are more calls than there are call takers? We do. Uh, we do have uh, rollovers that goes to uh, non-emergency lines if we have too many uh, 911s coming in and the day of cell phones has increased our volume. If we have a major accident or an event uh, that's, you know, at five o'clock in the afternoon on uh, interstate, uh, everybody with a cell phone is going to call you. So we have to process each one of those calls. I see. That's that's uh, a lot of work for you, but I guess in the in the big picture, that's good for the the person who's in danger at the time. That's correct, and you know. A lot of folks will just say, hey, have you, have you already got this? We're going to ask the same questions because they may have a different point of view of an accident. Let's say somebody from behind says, hey, it looks like a two-vehicle accident up here. We get the information. Next person calls in front and says, I can see smoke or flames. So that has increased that response. So we ask those questions on every single call. Jeff, thank you for taking the time to visit with us on Let's Talk, and we've learned a lot about uh, our response during uh, bad weather events, and uh, thank you for the service that you and the E911 people do in Jonesboro. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. All right.